Okay, well, welcome everyone and happy Friday. My name is Megan Jacobson and I am a nutrition field specialist with SDSU Extension. We are so excited to have you all join us. Um, this is our week three of our May virtual self-care series. And uh, next week will be the last session for May. And then um, we would love to have you join us for uh, the following self-care series, which will start up in August. Um, so last week I presented on um, some lunchbox ideas and provided a recipe um, to kind of help us prepare um, ahead for, for lunch and packing a healthy lunch for ourselves and our kids. So if you missed it and you want to view that, you should have received a recording link to that session. Um, if you didn't, please let me know and we can get sure get you hooked up. So for today, Amber Letcher is with us and she will be discussing how to relieve stress with some relaxing outdoor activities. And before I introduce Amber, we would like to get to know um, all of you who are joining us today a little bit better. So if you could put your name and your favorite outdoor place in the chat box, we would love to see that. And I'm really happy to introduce this morning, uh, Amber Letcher. She is the 4-H Youth Development Specialist with SDSU Extension and is based on the Brookings campus. Amber works with youth and families in South Dakota by providing programming and resources that promote health and wellness with a special emphasis on rural communities. So if you have any questions, please feel free to use the chat box and um, I can help address anything that you um, are needing during today's session. Um, and with that, let's go ahead and get started. Um, I will just reiterate that question. I know a few of you were joining as I was talking. So we would love to have all of you um, today put your name and your favorite outdoor place in the chat box. Okay. All right, Amber, I will go ahead and turn it over to you. Wonderful. Good morning, everyone. I'm so happy to, to see so many of you on this sunny Friday morning. It's sunny where I am, at least. <laughs> um, we're gonna talk about some warm weather activities that we can do, um, especially now that it's, it's getting a little bit warmer and we're able to be outside a little bit more, which is also very nice. Um, there are lots of benefits to doing some activities outside, and especially if we're doing outside activities for stress management. Um, so we're calling this nature-based mindfulness, and the idea is to get outside um, either by yourself or with others and do some relaxing activities. So the outdoors are really the ideal place for doing some of these activities, especially with mindfulness. So if you're unfamiliar with the concept of mindfulness, it's all about being present in the moment, really focusing your attention on the right now. And sometimes that's hard to do. A lot of times that's really hard to do, but just being outside gives us kind of a head start. So uh, being out in nature makes us a little bit more calm, just naturally, it sets the mind at ease. And so that helps in reducing distraction and uh, limits that mind wandering a little bit, which is often the struggle that we have when we're trying to practice mindfulness. We're thinking about a hundred different things things all over the place. So being outside, again, gives us that head start. Being outside in nature also naturally reduces our anxiety. So if you've ever been told or it's been recommended to you to listen to sounds of nature, even on like a, a recording, that will calm you, that will reduce your stress. It's because our brain interprets those sounds of nature as non-threatening. So it, it sets us at ease. Um, it makes us ready to be more relaxed. And then lastly, being outside in nature, there's virtually unlimited resources for us to use in terms of mindfulness. So there are things like the warm sun, uh, a nice breeze, even some of the the other natural elements like the grass or leaves, all of those things can be tools that we incorporate into our mindfulness practice. So the outdoors is just a really great place to use a lot of these exercises. And now that the weather's warming up, 
again, we have so many more possibilities to do that. So before I get into our activities for the day, I just wanted to give some tips on how to make your mindfulness practice the most effective. So how to get the most out of being mindful. And here the key is really consistency. So it's something that you need to do often. Daily is best, even if it's just for a few moments to really see those benefits, to really notice a difference in your, your anxiety or your self-awareness, it needs to happen consistently. If you're relying on mindfulness only when you're at that point of high frustration and, and stress, it will still be helpful to you. But again, to maximize those benefits, we really want to try to do it as often as possible, at least daily. And as you do that, as you develop a routine and you're practicing consistently, you'll notice that your attention span increases. And so these activities will get easier for you because your mind is going to wander a little bit less. You won't have to work as hard to really focus. So take that opportunity then to expand your practice a little bit just increase it by a little bit. And it doesn't have to take over your life. You don't have to do this for hours at a time. But if you're feeling like things are going well and you could add a little bit more time, you'll see those added benefits. And then lastly, a wonderful part of mindfulness is that it helps us become a little bit more self-aware. But in order to do that, we have to practice some self-reflection as well. And so as you are doing your routine, you're doing your practices, you want to take a step back and evaluate periodically. So think about what's going well. Um, are some of the activities maybe not, not producing the effect that you wanted? That's okay. And if that's the case, switch to something else, try something different. So we want to take the time to, to think about how it's going, evaluate, make adjustments as needed, and then start that routine again. So uh, reflection is also an important piece of our mindfulness practice. Okay, so those are my tips. Uh, let's get into some actual activities. These are uh, nature-based mindfulness activities appropriate for you to do alone or with a group, with family. They're also adaptable depending on the age group that you're working with. So anywhere from childhood up into adulthood, older adulthood. And they are also uh, what I call resource light. So you don't need a lot of supplies or um, you know, a, a lot of setup in order to do these activities. Um, the first one is one that I'd like us to do today together so you can get a sense of what it's like. And I call it cloud thoughts. And here what we're doing is focusing our attention on the sky up in the clouds. Hopefully there's some clouds in your sky today. So uh, you can do this by going outside, finding a comfortable place, sitting, lying down. And it's a self-awareness exercise. So we're going to set a timer. Today we'll do just about a minute. Um, and I'll just have you focus on the sky. If there's a window nearby, look out at that. If you're in a place that doesn't have windows, you can focus on the graphic that I have in front of you. And I just want you to pay attention to what thoughts are going through your mind during this time or what feelings are emerging? What emotions might you be feeling? Just pay attention to those. Uh, we're not going to try to change them. We're just becoming aware of what's on your mind, what thoughts are going through your mind. So let's, let's do this for about a minute and then we'll move on to the next step. So um, get in a comfortable position. I'm going to set a timer for us and We'll just take a moment, either focus on this graphic or the window out in front of you, and then we'll, we'll come back together. So comfortable spot. Let's start by taking a deep breath in through the nose and then out through the mouth. And then you can begin just focusing on those thoughts.
Okay, that's one minute. Let's take another breath in and exhale, deep breath out. And then for another minute, I'm gonna have you write down, what were you feeling? What thoughts came to your mind? On a scrap of paper, you pull up a, a document on your computer. Let's take a minute to just write down what went through our mind during that time. And I'll have us come back together again. Now, if you're comfortable sharing some of those thoughts that you had, feel free to type those into the chat box. Um, while you do that, I'll talk about some other adaptations for this exercise that you can think about. So writing down those thoughts are a really great way to reflect and create that self-awareness. If you're doing this consistently, you can create what's called a cloud journal. And so that allows you to, to look for patterns. Um, as you're doing this exercise, are there certain thoughts that seem to come up a lot? Or maybe you'll find that during certain parts of the year, you know that you're more stressed. Your stress levels are just elevated during that time. And knowing this can help us uh, predict or maybe take some proactive steps towards some stress management if we, we have that understanding of our pattern. If you're not interested in writing, you can also draw. So uh, draw a picture of your thoughts or draw a picture that represents how you are feeling. Drawing is a good option if you're working with people who maybe language is a bit of a barrier or maybe they don't have the language skills yet. So younger children, this is a good exercise to do with them and then let them draw. You can switch up the mediums you're using, so paints, markers, pencils, uh, whatever, uh, whatever you have nearby. Um, the, the other nice thing about this activity is that you can, you know, if your daily routine more lends itself to activity at night, um, you can do this at night as well. And so instead of star or cloud thoughts, you're going to have star thoughts, right? So looking up at the, at the sky, looking at those stars, and then keeping track of what your thoughts were. Um, I see in the chat box, um, somebody said it was, it was calming. Uh, they, they felt themselves praying for more clouds and rain. So yeah, right? We were thinking about there I see some, some present moment things and feeling calm. And then also thinking maybe about the future a little bit, right? Hoping for more rain. So yes, so keeping track of those, again, this is a good exercise for people of all ages, really simple to do and only for a few minutes a day and you'll still see some effectiveness. Um, also, just note that I did put a file in the chat box, which is just a, a a file of the slides I'm sharing with you since there are some steps here so you can use that later if you want to go back to any of these activities. Um, the next activity I'll share with you is what we call bubble breathing. So yes, just simple bubbles, right? Just dollar store container of bubbles and a plastic wand and you can do mindfulness activities with this as well. So sometimes we think about bubbles as more of a childhood activity, but that's not true. We can still enjoy blowing bubbles even well into our adulthood. So the 
This is really an adaptation of other breathing exercises. So with mindfulness, we really focus on the breath and we've talked a lot about breathing exercises throughout this series. We go back to them because they're very simple, yet they're very effective. And so bubble breathing is a way for us to practice um, consistent breathing. It also helps us practice getting a full breath in and then a full exhale out. And the exhale is the really important piece because that's what's lowering our heart rate and that is what is reducing our stress. And when we get stressed, it's really easy to do a lot of shallow breathing. So we forget to take those deep inhales and exhales. Bubble breathing is a practice and it will help train us to do those more deep intensive breaths. So you can do this by trying to blow bubbles that are a consistent size. And that is helping us control our breathing. You know, how do you have to, to uh, hold your breath or what kind of intensity do you have to use in your breathing in order to make that consistent shape? Or we can try to blow really large bubbles and pay attention to how we have to control our breath in order to blow that bubble without popping it and compare that to the breathing we do to blow really small bubbles. The other one that I really like is the longest chain activity, which can also be kind of a, a competition, maybe if you're, you're working with a group. Um, and here it helps us again, focus on that exhale. So we're gonna to try to blow the longest stream of bubbles, keep those bubbles going as long as possible. And it helps us um, exhale completely out our lungs, but also do it in a really controlled way. The other nice thing about bubble breathing is that it gives you a, a visualization to use even when you no longer have a wand in your hand. So uh, you might say, let's do our deep breathing. Let's do our bubble breathing. Pretend that you're, you're blowing that, that really large bubble and try not to break it. So you can call back or visualize that later. Okay, so bubble breathing, uh, another activity alone or uh, together with friends. The next activity I'll share with you is also an adaptation of a traditional mindfulness exercise, which is mindful walking. And so the point of mindful walking is we're becoming more present by engaging with our environment, really paying attention to everything that's, that's going on in our environment. And so we're, we're, we're paying attention to how our feet feel when they're walking on the ground and if there's wind or it's hot or it's cold outside, really focusing on using all of our senses. Uh, we've even talked about a rainbow walk here before in our series. So walking and trying to find every color of the rainbow or counting how many different colors we can find. That's a, a mindfulness exercise that we can do outside. So the barefoot walk then is a way to intensify our sense of touch as we're outside. So you might walk with shoes on or take a nice nature walk, but you're probably not really feeling that uh, through your feet. So the first step in your barefoot walk is to find a place where it's safe to walk barefoot, right? Um, but think about, you know, a sandy beach or a, a shallow stream or river, a pool, could be a kiddie pool or even a full-size pool. That water resistance uh, is a really good uh, mindful walking technique, but it could be something just as simple as walking around your lawn. So you'll take off your shoes, you'll center yourself, take a deep breath and then just start walking and really paying attention to what your feet are feeling. Spread those toes. Um, is, it, is it a warm surface? Maybe it's an uneven surface. And so you're gonna pay attention to how your body has to react as you are uh, walking and, and, and changing in order to navigate your environment. So this is also a really a fun one for kids. You know, they might run around outside barefoot, but are they really thinking about what do my feet feel like? What do my toes feel like? Um, so again, a way to draw extra focus and attention to that sense of touch. The last activity that I have to share with you is one that I'd like us to do together as a demonstration. So a way to end our time together this morning. And this one I, I just describe as becoming one with nature. And basically what we're going to do is 
imitate nature to help us with our mindfulness practice. Um, and so I'm going to, I'll stop sharing my screen. Again, you should have access to the file in the chat box and we'll also send that to you with the recording of this video. Um, but I will go through each of these steps and we'll do it together here. Hopefully you'll be able to see me a little bit better if I stop sharing my screen. Okay, so this activity can be done either standing or sitting. So based on the mobility of yourself or those you're working with, you can do either way. Um, whatever you feel comfortable with is fine today. I'm going to sit uh, as I guide the exercise, but if you're comfortable standing, feel free to, to get up and stand next to your computer. And then I'll have you put your feet just shoulder width apart and then just rest your arms by your side. If you're sitting, same thing. So we're gonna sit with nice good posture, both feet flat on the floor, shoulder width apart. And then I'll have you just rest your hands just in your lap comfortably. Okay. All right, so we are going to start. You can close your eyes if you prefer. And we'll start by taking a nice deep breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. And another breath in through the nose. And exhale completely. Do that bubble breathing. And one more in through the nose. And out through the mouth. And when you're ready, I'll have you take your attention all the way down to your feet. We're gonna wiggle our toes, spread our toes, and then gently press them into the ground. And visualize them as roots digging into the soil and creating a strong foundation for our tree. Another breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. Now we're gonna bring our focus up through the trunk of our tree to our hands and our arms. And slowly, we're gonna to start to raise our arms, wiggling our fingers. We're imagining them as branches and they're growing strong and tall, up over our head, stretching towards the sky. Stretch a little bit more. And then I want you to imagine a nice gentle breeze is coming through and it's causing your branches to sway, your body to twist any way that feels natural. I'm gonna feel the sun, the nice breeze. And then we're gonna look up to the sky, feel that warm sun we're gonna send thoughts of happiness and positivity out into the world. And then slowly bring your hands together up above your head and bring them down all the way down to your heart. And now we're going to send some thoughts of happiness and positivity to ourselves. And take a deep breath in through the nose, out through the mouth. One more breath in through the nose and exhale completely out through the mouth. And you can open your eyes. If you're standing, feel free to sit back down 
And as we come together, again, I really like this activity because it brings together multiple elements of mindfulness. There's some body awareness, there's some breathing, there's also some thoughts of, of positivity and happiness. And so it's a simple exercise, it's pretty quick, but a really great way to center yourself and even if you're with a group of, of people and maybe tensions are a little bit high or, um, or the room is maybe a little bit anxious, this is another easy activity to do. If you're able to go outside even better, um, but just to, to center everyone, bring the anxiety down a little bit in the room and reduce some of that stress. So those are all the activities I have for you today. I hope you're able to use a few of them in your daily routine. I'm happy to take questions if you have them. I'll watch the chat, but otherwise I'll turn it back over to you, Megan. Yes, thank you so much, Amber, um, for sharing these mindfulness practices. I hope you guys all enjoyed them. I know I really did. I picked some new ideas from um, those activities that you shared and I'm, I'm definitely gonna try them out. So thank you. Um, like Amber said, if you guys have any questions, I just put um, Amber's email address in the chat box. So feel free to reach out to her. I know we're running a little low on time, but if you do have any questions, you can pop them in the chat and um, or unmute yourself and ask them. Um, while you're you're thinking about um, the questions you you may have, I will say that next week is our last May session, and it's going to be on um, living your best organized life. So I'm really excited about that. Um, we are going to be learning about how to organize our space for productivity and creativity. Um, so, okay, and not seeing any questions in the chat. Um, you guys all have Amber's contact information. So with that, we will let you all go and we hope you have a great Friday, a nice weekend and are able to get outside. So take care, everyone. Thank you, everyone.